Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, I thought today, because we're in isolation, I spend a little bit of time chatting about what we can do, what we can't do. A lot of people um, during this coronavirus are moaning about we can't go out, we can't do this, we can't do that. Don't think about what you can't do, because you can't change it. Think about what you can do. And martial art training, Wing Chun training is something that you can still do. Yes, you can't do Chi Sao, very hard, to, you can't do partner work, you can't get feedback from your instructor directly. But with technology today, um, we've got Zoom, we've got Skype, we've got YouTube, we've got lots of technologies where we can share as best as we can 2D um, elements of Wing Chun. We know it's a 3D interactive, close protection, close quarter, getting close to your partner uh, type of martial art. It's a, it's a very, very close quarter thing, but that's not available. And it's a 3D thing, showing you shapes and, and, and positions from um, a camera is very, very different to you being able to walk around and look at it and position it, but it is better than nothing. So let's think about what we can do, think about some, some what we can train in isolation, think about the elements that we can benefit from, because if we work through our forms, Sinim Tao Cham Q Buji, Wooden Dummy, Knives, maybe even the pole, as we're training through these, doing some drills, working on the wall bag, as we're working through these, we can refine our shapes, we can refine our positions, and it should be, at the, by the time this is over, and it will be over, by the time we're all released and actually not, you know, breaking the, the isolation that's so important to keep everybody safe, your form should be perfect. That will only happen if you use your mind as well as train your body. Let's move on to the third section of Sinim Tao, which is really the, the hand shapes I want to talk about a little bit. So, Pak Sao, in the first section, Pak Sao. When we do the Pak Sao, Pak Sao only wants to go to the shoulder. It doesn't want to go beyond the shoulder. I shouldn't see space between my shoulder and the, and, and the back of the hand. It only wants to go to the shoulder. Okay, and the same thing on both sides. You don't want to go any further than the shoulder. Okay, so you don't want to see any space after the shoulder like this. Just go to the shoulder. And the reason for that is because if, and, and let's just assume the attack's coming in square on, because A, the camera's there, and B, I've got no part to demonstrate with. But if, if I do packs out of here, that's about as far across as I ever want to go. What I don't want to do with the tap that's coming in, yes, I would turn, yes, I'd position, yes, in the application, I won't be static, get all of that. There's a lot of concept within the form rather than application. But I would never, ever want to stretch beyond there because it starts pulling on the pectorals, pulls on the lats, pulls on the deltoids, stretches out on the triceps. It, all the muscles start to get tight. And why would I want to go across the centre line that far? Where in reality, I could do the same thing by using the hand over here. So anything that goes outside the line of the body, don't go pushing across beyond it. Don't, don't extend, it's ridiculous. Okay, so what he's trying to do is say that from, from the pack side, that's the perfect stopping point. You might do packs out anywhere in between, and it can come slightly back, there's no two ways about it. I can come packs out and cover myself here with facts out or something like that. But it's not going outside the line of the body, because if something's outside the line of the body, it's going to miss. And if it's coming in from a side, I'm going to turn and address that problem that way. Okay, so that's the first thing. It's the same as Bong Sao. Bong Sao tends to come maximum height of the eyebrows. It's not that if something hits you on the top of the head, it's not going to hurt, but your skull's really hard. If you've ever, ever got into a conflict with somebody and hit them on the head, it kind of hurts you a lot more than it hurts them. I remember a guy, a, 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 a guy got took uh, got a bit disgruntled with me shall we say and got a bit upset with me over something i wasn't aware of obviously and um he let his rottweiler off and his rottweiler attacked me and so i went to hit it because you know i like animals but i don't like animals biting me i went to hit it and i hit it on the head and it just upset it it wasn't happy and i had a whole new problem and they got very hard heads and i, I also remember catching somebody once in training thankfully quite hard on the on the head and they they were rubbing their head and i was looking at my hand going maybe down hospital because it, it really did a lot of damage. And it's not that I don't train, it's just that skulls are very, very hard. So it's not that I can't, I don't want to protect the top of my head. I may have to, but I'm going to use Bue or something. But Bong Sao, basically from the, from the frontal attack, Bong Sao is about as hard as they want to go. Okay, now I'm not going to get into a lot of debate, but there are people that will, will tell you that the Bong Sao should be flat. Okay, should be parallel to the floor, etc., etc. It's not about right or wrong, okay? They believe they're right, and I respect that. I believe I'm right, I'm asking them to respect that. It's not that Bong Sao should or shouldn't be flat. For me, putting Bong Sao flat doesn't protect my face. For me to protect my face, I need to lift my elbow up so that when I apply Bong Sao, it comes up here. Because in my personal experience, 
There aren't many people that go around trying to punch you in the, in the pectorals. There aren't many people that start an attack or finish an attack by punching you in the abdomen. Most attacks are around the face. And the reason for it is the five senses are there. If you get hit in the face and let's say they smash you on the nose, first attack that gets hit is the, is the pain sensors. It hurts, and it does hurt. It might, break, it might even break your nose. Secondly, your vision is impaired because it makes your eyes water. Thirdly, you've then got the taste impaired because when you get hit hard in the nose, it bleeds, but it goes down the throat. And although that might sound really weird that your pain sensors are impaired, what I mean by that is if you've ever bitten on the inside of your lip or inside of your cheek, you know you're bleeding. You can feel that odd taste. Then you check it and you go like, oh, yeah, yeah. That is not a good sensation to know that you're bleeding when you're in combat. It's psychologically, it just takes a little bit away from you. The sound of busting a nose is very simpler to get, getting a, a very hard mint in your mouth and biting or breaking a tooth. It's a horrible sound, it ricochets around. So it attacks the, 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 the ears as well. So all these senses, you know, and I, I suppose I missed out smell, but with a broken nose, I thought that was probably kind of a given. Your five senses get attacked if you hit here. If I get hit here, it's usually pain. That's about it. And pain isn't a stopper. Okay, people always go, oh, if you hit them hard, no. Pain is not a real stopper. Having worked in close protection for quite many years and having had to deal, thankfully not an awful lot, I didn't have to earn my money that much, but when I did, pain was never a stopper because they're on a drugs, they're on adrenaline, they're on alcohol, they're on a combination of the, they're, they see red mist. Pain doesn't stop them. Otherwise, boxing matches would stop in the first few rounds every time because it's got to hurt. I wouldn't get in a ring with a boxer. Um, you know, they're, they're experts at what they do. Um, it's got to hurt getting hit that many times. So if pain was a stopper, boxing rounds wouldn't go on for a long, long time. Damage is a stopper. You put your thumb in their eye, they tend to not be able to see you quite as much and hurt you quite as hard. You, 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 you indent their esophagus a little bit, or smack them in the throat. Suddenly, they're not breathing as well as they could do. Not dying becomes a higher priority than hurting you. Pain isn't, on its own right, is not a stopper. So hitting somewhere that's, you know, uh, ineffective. It's not a natural target. People don't don't think pain is not a stopper. They just go for the punch in the head. Okay, and of course it's easy. You, you don't get knocked out with a punch in the in the pectorals, but you will get knocked. You can get knocked out when you hit on the jaw, three quarter on the head, because your brain smashes on the inside of the skull. Your body does not happy about this. Control alt delete, and it's all over. So, and then you become a football for somebody, which is not a good day. So, pain is not the the, the worry. So, most punch is going to be the face. So, for me, I need tan to protect my face. I need bong side to protect my face. I need bu side to protect my face. Pack side to protect my face. All these techniques, I want to protect here. And if they, if they come down here, you know what? Thigh bong side works beautifully low as well. I've got no issue with it at all. Um, but but restrict, telling people it's restricted that your bong side should be parallel to the floor. First thing is, how does that protect your face? Because I can't, you know, my arm comes out from my shoulder horizontal. My bong side is not anywhere going to be coming my face. I don't. It can't work for me. And it's not criticising me else, this is just my explanation of why I do what I do. And the second thing is, if you look at it here, a lot of people say, oh yes, but it's shoulder by the shoulder. The problem is, if there's pressure put on the, onto the bong sow, it's going to affect the shoulder. What happens is, here, the scapula, the shoulder blade, starts pushing back, and then everything gets tight, and then it affects your posture. I can't absorb it, because that's, that's solid bone. So any, any impact here travels straight up the bone to the shoulder, and affects the shoulder and knocks me backwards. And it affects my posture. Where if I have my arm up, then any any application here, or even on the shoulder, on the elbow, sorry, will flex because it's like a pivot. It's only not a pivot when it's horizontal. For the same reason, then I was talked about land sow low. So if the force is applied here, I can dissolve it. Okay, not flat. When then force is applied here, I can't dissolve it. I take it all on board. So that's why I do bong sow higher. Than the, than the here. I let the muscle groups and the triceps and the, and the, and the deltoids and all the muscles that support it in a bong sow, when it is pushed in hard, and even if it's pushed at the shoulder, rather than the shoulder going back, I can absorb it through the, through the rotation of the pivot. If it's flat, I can't. And more importantly, I want to protect my face. Okay, so having it down here doesn't work for me. Same as some people will tell you time sow is flat. And again, I'm not going to say it's wrong. It may work beautifully for them. For me personally, having tarn sow flat leaves me vulnerable because it's this that I'm concerned about in combat. So tarn sow for me is up here. And that's not criticism of anybody else. Don't, don't, don't take it that I'm telling you that's how it ought to be done. I will tell you that's how I 
do it. That's why I do it. That's, I was also taught to do it that way. Um, you know, my teacher is five foot, four foot 11, something like that, you know. If he did bongs out like this, even against me, I'd be very easily in. He has to lift his bongs up. You know, when, when somebody's here and they pull, and they pull your arm down because they want to punch you in the face, I'm not going to step in like that. I'm going to step in here. I'm going to bridge. I want the forearm to do the deflection. I want to, I want to redirect the force. So when I'm doing bong sao, it's up here. So it, for me, bong sao covers to the eyebrows. Pat sao covers to the shoulder. Pat sao covers to the shoulder. And then the gan sao coming down here covers down to about the waistline. Okay. And so what, I've, what you define is this hand protection box. Eyebrows to just below the navel, side to side. And that box, anything coming in, that's what I can, I'm going to cover. Anything outside that, I'm not going to try and defend with my hands. It's got to enter that box to, to, to hit me. Obviously, it's not a flat line on my body. It's, it's, you know, it's a 3D space. So I've got the elbow range. I've got the wrist range. I've got my interception range. I've got the thing that covers me. So when something's coming in here, I get my elbow in the way and it gives me body cover. Um, but that's what, that's, for me, that's what student ties help you practice. So just doing it sloppily doesn't, doesn't make any difference. It's not going to work from a point of view of learning or benefit. So for me, Paxau, just to here. In the first section of Sinim Tau, bring it to the center. Again, notice the wrist, relax, relax, snap at the end.